my fault. There we go. Anyway, welcome. Welcome to our midweek Lenten services as we consider the theme, Healer of Our Every Ill. And this evening, our reflection is on healing in our relational life. Once again, a reminder that we are reusing the bulletins uh, each week. Um, so if you want to leave them in your pew or on the kiosk back in the narthex. May God bless our worship this evening. I invite you to stand. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our hymn is number 612, Healer of Our Every Ill. The text will be on the screen, but if you want to follow along in your hymnal, it's hymn number 612. Seek and you will find, knock and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. 
Friends in Christ, God knows our needs before we ask, and in our asking prepares us to receive the gift of grace. Let us open our lives to God's healing presence, forsaking all that separates us from God and our neighbor. Let us be mindful not only of personal evil, but also our communal sins of family, class, race, and nation. Let us confess to God whatever has wounded us or brought injury to others, that we may receive mercy and become for each other ministers of God's grace. Let us confess our sin together. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you with our with our, and by what we have left done. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. May the God of mercy who forgives all your sins strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy, beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Carl was quite a character. I had been invited to the 50th anniversary for he and his rock-solid wife, Anne. Their family hosted the event at a local country club, and there were about 50 folks there, family, close friends. Now, Carl always had a story, and there were about six of them that he told over and over and over and over so that we knew at some point in the evening, Carl was gonna stand up and he was gonna say something. And the moment came, he stood up, took a spoon to his glass to get everyone's attention and then started. As Anne and I celebrate our 50th wedding anniversary, I want to tell you that I've been happily married for 35 years. Well, you may or may not think his humor appropriate. I can tell you that there was both shock and plenty of groans in the room. But that was Carl. And as inappropriate as the humor seemed to me for that particular occasion, I do believe that there was probably some transparent truth in what he was saying. Because relationships are hard. Even the best relationships are at times hard. Even the best marriages have bumps in the road. Even the best parent-child relationships become strained at times. Even the best friendships are prone to misunderstandings. Relationships are hard work. See, there are true two truths about us as human beings that are often at odds with each other. The first is that we are inherently social beings. We need each other. We need friendships, companionship, social interaction, intimacy. 
We need people close to us who we love and who love us. And we need people with whom we can trust the innermost thoughts of our hearts, people with whom we can share our hopes and our dreams, our hurts and our sorrows, and even sometimes our frustrations and our anger. In a word, we need people who get us. You see, if we don't have relationships, our physical health suffers, not only our emotional health. Medical studies have shown that loneliness can have worse consequences for our physical health than smoking cigarettes. Well, if one truth is that we are inherently social people, <laughs> the other truth is that we are also broken people. We sometimes hurt and are sometimes self-centered, prone to misunderstand even the most innocent actions of those around us. We often make, make up stories in our heads about the motivations of others' words and actions, as stories that often have no basis in reality, and yet we tell the stories internally. And when we are hurt, often we lash out and hurt others in return, often the ones we love the most. Now, the fact that relationships are hard is evident from Paul's letters in the New Testament. In all of his letters, all of his letters, he spends significant time urging the kind of hard-to-live values that are so important to keeping our relationships healthy and thriving. One of the keys that I see when I read through Paul's letter is that Paul urges us almost constantly to look beyond our own needs and pay attention to the needs of those around us. If we can let go of the notion of our own ego and our own needs and our own wants at the center of the universe, which that's so easy to do, and realize that there's always this dynamic of mutuality, of give and take, of back and forth, then our relational life will go better for us. The mantra is, it is not always about me. And yet the other side of that truth also is that we have to take care of ourselves in relationship because you see in caring for others, we are not intended to make ourselves doormats for other people with whom we are in relationship. There needs to be healthy boundaries. It's not okay when other people do things to hurt us or when they're mean to us or they belittle us or they discount our feelings. And so it's important to be able to say to those we love when we are hurt and, and to be able to say what we need in those relationships. And I know that I'm not telling you anything you don't already know when I say that for all of us there is room to grow and get better at this. You know, in some way or another, I've been working at relationships for 62 years. And sometimes it feels like I'm not very good at them. And yet I keep trying to be better and do better. And all of us, I believe, can develop a healthy curiosity about how we can do better at both relating to others in a healthy way and at the same time taking care of ourselves. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, I think relating to others requires a deep sense of humility. And when Paul talks about relationships, always that piece of humility is involved in it. You heard that in our reading tonight. It's the recognition that this whole relational stuff is something we can't do on our own. The 12-step program of Alcoholics Anonymous has been tremendously helpful for those seeking to recover from addiction. And one of the steps, one of the early steps is coming to believe in a greater power that can help bring restoration. And that's an important step in our relational lives as well. Understanding that we can only bring the best to our relationships when we are trusting God to constantly renew and transform us. So this evening, once again, for those of you who wish, you are invited to come forward to receive anointing and a prayer for healing. As you approach the healing station, please uh, give the anointer your name so that they can make that prayer personal for you. And this evening, whether the healing you seek is healing in your relationships or 
physical or emotional or spiritual healing or even something else, you are invited to come forward knowing that the tracing of the cross on your forehead is a sign of God's presence and God's promise of wholeness and healing for you. I invite you to stand. God, our creator, your will for us and for your people is health and salvation. Have mercy on us. Jesus Christ, Son of God, you came that we might have life and have it in abundance. Have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, dwelling within us, you make us temples of your presence. Have mercy on us. To the triune God, the source of all love and life, let us offer our prayers. For all who are in need of healing, Lord, in your mercy. For all who are disabled by injury or illness, Lord, in your mercy. For all who are troubled by confusion or pain, Lord, in your mercy. For all whose increasing years bring weariness, Lord, in your mercy. For all about to undergo surgery, Lord, in your mercy. For all who cannot sleep, Lord, in your mercy. For all who practice the healing arts, Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, source of all healing, in Jesus Christ you heal the sick and mend the broken. We bless you for this oil pressed from the fruits of the earth, given to us as a sign of healing and forgiveness and the fullness of life that you give. By your spirit, come upon all who receive this ministry of compassion, that they may receive your healing touch and be made whole to the glory of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. You may be seated, and as I said, those of you who wish are invited to come forward for healing as we sing. There will be two healing stations, one on each side of the sanctuary.
hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us in his grace. Amen.